Hi and welcome to the Tip TV Master Investor Show. My name is James Faulkner and I'm the Editorial Director of Master Investor Magazine. I'm joined by Victor Hill today, who's one of our uh, most popular contributors. Good morning, James. Good morning, to Victor. be here. Um, tell us what you've been writing about this month, Victor. Well, I did a, a feature on France and the French economy. And I really wanted to point out why, despite all the uh, political um, tergiversations that have been going on recently with the presidential election, we should really focus on the basics, which is that France has a backbone of some very fine world-class companies. And these companies have been around a long time and will continue to exist for a long time. And I just wanted to put that into the political context. Of course, France also has its problems right now. And its problems are many, aren't they? Um, well, let's not economic. overdo it. I mean, in many ways, France uh, corresponds very closely to the UK. It has an economy of about the same size. It has a population of about the same size. Therefore, it has GDP per capita of about the same level. I and mean, the two countries have been kind of leapfrogging one another over the last uh, 30 years or so. And I think with the fall in the value of the pound since June last year, it might be the French economy has pulled ahead of that of the UK. But they're, they're very similar and they have similar structural uh, problems. But in the case of France, you have uh, endemic unemployment. Um, you have unemployment at a level of around 10% uh, as opposed to 4.7%. And the youth employment is particularly bad, isn't it? The very much so. The double, youth employment the is up to 25% uh, in, in some areas. And obviously, you know, if you've been unemployed to the age of 30, the chances of ever getting a job uh, are very uh, slight. So, you know, youth employment is a major issue in France as it is for Italy, Spain, Greece, and for the southern European countries. The, the, the other problem, if I may say so, with France is that of growth. Because if you go back to the uh, years uh, from the war right up until the early 90s, France sustained a fantastic rate of growth, double digit throughout the 60s and most of the 70s, and was able to catch up with the UK and even um, overtake it. Um, but since the financial crisis in particular, uh, growth has been extremely mediocre, and it's currently up to 1%, which is you know, better than nothing, but it's still lagging behind the levels of France and Germany. So what I pointed out in the article is if you go back to 2002, that's 15 years ago, you could say that um, GDP per capita in Germany and France were equivalent. Now Germans enjoy a GDP ca per, per capita of about 17% more. So in other words, Germany and to a lesser extent the UK have been accelerating away from France. And this is why the focus now is on the need to reform, and particularly in, in terms of reform of the labour market. So um, we've gathered that France has got a lot of problems. Um, what are the prospects for reform now that we've got um, Emmanuel Macron as, as president? Um, is he just a fresh face or is there anything? Well, he is a fresh face. He's a young man with a fantastic uh, CV. Whether he's actually got the necessary experience, of course, is, something, uh, is another question. But he is qualified. Uh, he's a brilliant economist and so forth. He's been a banker. He had three years at uh, Rothschilds. Now, so he's actually a bit of an establishment figure, even though he kind of portrays himself as, a, as, yeah, as an upstart. The, the idea that he is an outsider is a bit far-fetched. I mean, he comes from the inside of the French establishment. He went to two of the top elite schools. He's been walking the corridors of power for many years. Now, he knows everybody. But to the extent that he went out and set up his own political party, from scratch and launched a new political brand, uh, that is a remarkable achievement in, in its own right. The question, though, is whether he can actually deliver the reforms that France now needs. And I'm just looking ahead a little bit um, towards the end of this year. 21st of December 2017, that is going to be Mr. Macron's 40th birthday, and I'm oh. sure he'll have a big party. I'm not sure if I'm going to be invited. But you, you never know. <laughs> Maybe not after this article. <laughs> I'm, I'm suggesting that we will know if Macron is going to make the impact that he needs to make by his 40th birthday party just before Christmas. So that gives him just over six months to put together a credible package of reforms 
which have the backing of the French Parliament, because the key issue is whether he can get sufficient legislative backing within the French political system to, put through, to push through any proposed reforms. Right. I'm not going to give France the benefit of the doubt on the basis that Aleppo doesn't change its spots. Um, so, given that, um, what are the attractions for an investor um, looking at France right now? Well, you have to consider that France has developed um, a number of key strategic industries in which the country excels, and they've done this by a system of planning. Etatisme means the state elite uh, mandarins who run the country effectively, um, even when the politicians are, 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 are um, struggling with one another, have created these um, strategic industries of which energy, uh, transport, fast trains, aerospace are preeminent examples. And in all of these sectors, France has remarkably uh, robust um, businesses. I mentioned quite a few in my piece. I was surprised to find out that France actually has more Fortune 500 companies than both the UK and Germany. 29 Fortune 500 companies as opposed to 28 for Germany and I think 26 for the UK. So it, it has a very considerable stable of, of companies. I mean, the, 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 the French stock market index, the CAC 40 is 40 companies only. It's a smaller stock market uh, than the UK, but of course comparisons are odious because a lot of um, the UK market cap is accounted for by investment companies. Mm. But you, you, you have a, a, a relatively small number, shall we say 30 uh, companies, which should be considered in any diversified European equity portfolio. And I'm looking at energy companies, I'm looking at automotive players, I'm looking at uh, retailers, and even one uh, hospitality company, um, which is Accor, an, an amazing company, um, which has uh, just shy of 4,000 uh, hotels across the world, many of which um, our readers will be familiar with, you know, from, from the, you know, really the budget level, um, absolute, you know, rock bottom Formula One <laughs> chain, 25 euros a night through Ibis, budget hotels, through Novotel, you know, three to four star, right th through to the five star, and, and Deluxe End with, with Sofitel. And that company is opening up a new hotel somewhere around the world every three days wow. at a phenomenal rate of growth, mm -hmm. um, excellent um, fundamentals, um, creating a lot of um, EBITDA. And uh, the share price has recently been on an upward trend, but it, 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 it was, to my way of thinking, um, underplayed uh, for some time. So that's one company that you might consider. Um, yeah. And what it has a feature of uh, French companies that I like very much is really excellent branding and positioning. I mean, the, the marketing is a key um, reason for French success. Um, why do British people drink French mineral waters? I mean, when we have you know, particularly good you know, mineral waters from Yorkshire, where you come from, James, and elsewhere. That's right. Um, it's all in the <laughs> branding, well. the design, the flair, which the French bring to their uh, industrial policy, as well as this very strong strategic and global uh, focus. I mean, French companies think big, and they have huge global reach. Look at something like Carrefour, which is the biggest retailer in the world, or amongst the biggest retailers in the world. I mean, it's it's knocking on Walmart's door. It's got something like 12,000 outlets across the globe, of which uh, about 250 in China alone. You know, if these are hypermarkets in provincial uh, Chinese cities. I mean, it's an, a phenomenal company with 90 billion euros of uh, sales uh, annually. And again, uh, one to watch. I mean, there, are, there were concerns about downward pressure on margins last year, but I think it's actually... Uh, turned the corner. So, okay. um, again, a strategic perspective which is uh, admirable. Right, I think that's all we've got time for today. Um, but what are you writing about next month, Victor? I'm going to be looking, um, hopefully this is quite topical, um, since Cyber Black Friday uh, last week, at the forthcoming global cyber war and who is likely to win. And this raises a whole number of issues, some of which are a little bit worrying right. uh, in terms of will we ever be able to um, ensure safe and secure computer systems 
and who should we be afraid of? Should it be governments or criminals? Good stuff. I'll be looking forward to reading that one. Um, you can read all Victor's articles on masterinvestor.co.uk forward slash magazine. Um, I'll be back next month. Thanks for watching. Thanks, James.